staring down elimination. Miami playing without Gabe Vincent out with an ankle sprain. And maybe that contributes to all the turnovers one way or another. This is the first possession of the game. And it's a harbinger of things to come. The Celtics turning defense into offense. Miami 16 turnovers. Meanwhile, great ball movement, Allen Hahn. Jason Tatum doing it inside and out. And that's what you wanted, Jason Tatum, to set that tone 12 points in a huge first quarter. And they would open up a 13-point lead and then watch the middle of the lane open up. Oh, are you serious? Jason Tatum throwing it down the Celtics by 15 and then Derek White beating the buzzer. And Derek White here also talking about tone setter. Hit three of three from downtown. The three-point shot is the story of the night for Boston. Celtics up 35-20. After one, and then more of the same in the second, it's Jalen Brown. The Heat, 10 turnovers in the first half. Boston by 17, and then a few minutes later, the three-party continues. Boston, 61-44 at the half. We go to the third quarter, and you know what? Miami never really made a run, and Derek White was spectacular, Alan. Yeah, exactly, yeah. In the starting lineup, everybody hit 24. You had three, uh, four. 20-point scores in the starting lineup. Derek White, 24 points in this game. Made six threes, and then there's Tatum knocking one down. He had 21 points and 11 assists, and he was finding Marcus Smart. Celtics once again stare down elimination and scoff in its general direction. <laughs> Boston wins by 13. They're getting back in this thing. Jalen Brown, what's the mentality? Our back has been against the wall. Obviously, we... Didn't imagine being in this position, being down 3-0. But, you know, when adversity hits, you get to see, like, what a team is really made of. And I think now it's a series. Well, there's ignorant belief. We do, we do believe um, at all times that, you know, if we still have a chance. Everybody's counting us out. You know, the way we're supposed to win, we're supposed to be done. Relax. You know, anything can happen. You know, I, I hate to correct Jason Tatum, but not everybody has counted them out. I remind you once again, if you've been watching this show, you know that I've been changing this graphic on the air every single day despite the 3 nothing deficit. This thing is <laughs> headed to history. 1 and 150 is on the way because the Celtics are the better team. They just hadn't played like it. Let's dive into it now. Again, Jeff Van Gundy and Timmy Legler are getting up with us early this morning here as well. Jeff, I will start with you. How do we explain the Celtics? I mean, your brother is obviously doing the series, and you're watching all of this. The Celtics, the first three games of this series, looking so lifeless, looking um, just looking so unlike what they are capable of. And now all of a sudden they turn it on. How do you explain it? Well, I don't think in the first two games they looked lifeless. I thought uh, they didn't play particularly well. They didn't shoot particularly well. And uh, game three, uh, it was inexplicable, certainly. But I think the incredible overreaction, both negative and positive, is something you have to try to avoid as a team, understanding that there is going to be this groundswell of negativity on uh, every loss, and there is going to be a coronation on every win. So you've got to try to avoid that and just try to play better and better. And like Darvin Ham, when he was in that same predicament down 0-3, he talked about the term adjustment becoming uh, trite and cliche, and it's got to be separated from player performance. And I think what the, you've seen the last two games is the Celtics players have played a lot better. They've shot a lot better, and they've handled the ball much better. So uh, pretty simple answers. Hard to do, though, in playoff scenarios is to just concentrate on just playing better. You know, and Allen came in this morning, uh, Timmy Legs, and was immediately just talking about the shooting. And we can put stats up there for you. But, but the, the, the bottom line of it is, I mean, you're a shooter, Tim. Sometimes they just go in. Is it as simple as that? Because uh, here are the numbers. And, and Allen was referencing them earlier. Just look at the difference. In the first three games, they couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. In the last couple of games, it feels like they can't miss from three. A a a Timmy Legs, how does one explain the fact that all of a sudden they're knocking shots down, including open looks. They were missing open threes. Now they're making open threes. How do you explain it? Well, listen, I just think a lot of times, you know, guys fuel off each other. They feed off of each other. When you see the basketball go in early, uh, you, as a teammate, it definitely takes some of the pressure off of you because I just know when, when I was playing in the league and as a shooter, when other guys are making shots, you don't put as much pressure on yourself to say, well, I got to make this one. We just missed five in a row. It, everybody sort of feels that collectively. The quality of the shots have been very good these last two games. And to Allen's point, 
you know, they, they were a minus 39 in point differential from the three-point line in the first three games. They're a plus 54 in the last two games. That is the extent to which they have flipped this script. But here's what's interesting. This is who the Celtics are when they are the best version of themselves. This is how they play. And typically, they put teams to bed with a barrage of three-point shooting when they are at their best. They have had some very up-and-down shooting performances throughout the postseason, not just in this series. They had some couple nights like that in the Atlanta series. They had a couple nights like that in the Philly series. They struggled in the first three games of this one. But nobody's going to deny Boston was a better team than the Heat over the course of the regular season. So it's very unusual for a team that's a better team that's healthy to be down 3-0 in a series. Once they find their rhythm, right now Boston is reminding themselves of that, that they are a better team when they play to their strengths and they shoot the ball adequately, which certainly they've done more than that over the last two games. You know, Alan, I mean, it, it, it's the most overused phrase in the sport, but sometimes there's no but it's a make or miss league, yeah. right? You make it and all of a sudden everything looks different. It's amazing because you don't want to simplify anything with this, especially at this level of the sport to just simply, well, that team made shots and that team didn't. There's always things that go on between that, but it literally has been that it's been the, just what we showed you. The graphic tell, tells the whole story and what Leg said there as well as the minus 39 from the three point line in the first three games to now plus 54 in the last two. That's the story of the shooting, but it's the moodiness of it as well. As we've talked about with the Celtics, how they are really a roller coaster team. So in the first, you saw seven of 12 from downtown in the first quarter of that game, mm -hmm. and that's all you needed to know. Last year, when the Celtics made that run to where they were within two games of a championship, they really did it based on their defense. And in the last two games, look at the numbers. They've held the Heat under 100 points, and they've scored 54 points off of turnovers. So, Jeff, how about that side of the floor? That was what they hung their hat on a year ago. It hasn't been as much this year. Maybe the coaching change and everything else has contributed to that. But how about the Celtics on the defensive end of the floor? Well, they were outstanding defensively. I think they ended up second in the league defensively in efficiency. Uh, they uh, play basically the same sort of defense, switching a lot of different screens. I think what they, you've seen is an increase in ball pressure uh, and physicality, and which has allowed them to be a little bit more active, uh, cause more turnovers. You know, certainly that's something that uh, Miami's going to have to correct if they're to win Game Six, is to take care of the ball at a better rate. So I, I think it's the shooting, the intensity defensively, and the activity defensively. And I think basically strategy-wise, they've stayed the same. They've played basically the same guys. They've played, you know, Brogdon's, they're managing that maybe injury a little bit. But I, I just think they've played a lot better. And I think sometimes, you know, there's these wild overreactions. Uh, and it is as simple as shooting better, Playing a bit, playing harder, and taking care of the ball, and I think that's always a good formula to win. Legs the turnovers. I, I, we wondered yesterday how much the how much of an impact losing Gabe Vincent would be. And again, this is a Miami team. I'll remind people who have not been paying attention. They've already lost a lot of players who handle the ball. Uh, Tyler Hero not there. Victor Oladipo not there. Now Gabe Vincent, who was not a household name, but he goes down and they just turn the ball over repeatedly. How, how significant a factor do you think that was last night, Legs? It was enormous because of what Jeff just said. I thought Boston turned up the pressure. You saw more guys getting into ball handlers further out on the floor challenging the heat knowing that Gabe Vincent wasn't there and that loss was pretty significant first of all he's been playing great offensively but he's also gives them a lot more quickness defensively so they went with a slower lineup early in the game with Kevin Love on the floor and there were some mistakes in coverage because of that that allowed some clean looks early in the game to give guys you know confidence right out of the gate and I thought Boston sensed it they got out on the floor they got into people and when you look at their personnel defensively and this is why we've lo loved them so much the last couple of years. You know, they have so many guys that can adequately guard guys individually. When you look at you know, Tatum and Brown alone with their length and lateral quickness, then you throw in a Brogdon, a Derek White, you know, Grant Williams, who does a really good job when he has to switch out on the guys. They've got rim protection with Robert Williams. So this is a team from a personnel standpoint that has everything you need defensively. I think their offense and the ball going through the net and forcing Miami to play against more half-court defense is a huge factor, particularly when you're missing your starting point guard.
And, and let me ask Jeff one more quickly here, and we'll have all morning long to dive into all this. But there's something I always wonder about. You, you mentioned Darvin Ham talking about adjustments. You coached a lot of long playoff series. I've always wondered, at what point do the adjustments run out? At, 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 we're, we're up to game six now. Are there still significant changes that a coach can make? At what point does a playoff series become, I'm going to put my guys out there, you're going to put your guys out there, and whoever plays best is going to win? W when do we reach that point in a series? Well, it's interesting, and I think you have to prepare yourself for this as a coach, is that when you win in the end, it's a player's league. And when you lose playoff games, it's a coach's league. <laughs> and, the moment you lose, and the moment you lose a playoff game, people are going to start saying the word adjustments over and over again. But what you have to determine as a coach is what gives you the best chance to win. Sometimes that may involve a schematic uh, adjustment. Sometimes it doesn't. Same with who you play, maybe who you start, who you rotate. People want to see you do something. And you can't give in to that mentality. You have to try to narrow it down to what you believe gives yourself the best chance. So when you're Miami right now, uh, you can change your lineup. You can eliminate somebody from your rotation. You can add somebody in. But as far as scheme wise, they're either going to blitz Tatum in the pick and roll, like you see, saw them do for most of the series, or when they hurt them and spread them out last night, you'll see them switch that a little bit. There's, there's not infinite amount of schematic changes that you make at this time of the year. They can zone more or they can zone less. Their zone has been semi-effective. Boston, I think, has done a much better job against the zone by, oh, this is crazy adjustment by Joe Mazzula. Perimeter shot. Makes so sense. This, the idea of there's infinite amount of change that you can make and still play well, as a coach, you have to resist the temptation to do something so that criticism doesn't come your way. What you have to do is lock in on what gives yourself the best chance to win. That's why I admire what Joe Missoula has done, which is not tweaked and, and given into the adjustment police, but focused in on exactly getting his team to play harder, take care of the ball better. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.